What's up guys? Welcome back to Mr. D's Tech News and Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the Akai MPK25 for all you music producers out there. Let's do it! Alright, so we're going to pretty much start off looking at the actual case of the keyboard. It's all pretty much all made of plastic except for the bottom. The bottom has a metal plate which makes it pretty sturdy and the rubber pads make sure that it stays in place wherever you put it. When it comes to the keys, you're getting a pretty decent set of keys. You have 25, which means you're pretty much restricted to only one hand, uh, but the size is pretty good. They're larger than the ones you would find in say the MPK Mini MK2, which brings closer to half size. This is closer on the full size scale and the feel on the keys is great. They have a nice weighted feel to them. On the left of the keys, we have the mod and the pitch bend wheel. They have a nice rubber feel to them, gives them a nice grippy feel so you don't feel like your fingers are just constantly slipping off. Uh, this springs back very nicely. And this, just like everything else, has a nice weighted feel. It doesn't feel like it's cheaply made. Next up, above the wheels, we have an array of 12 pads, which in my opinion, they're okay. Um, I would recommend raising up the sensitivity as sometimes it does take a lot of pressure to get the sound that you want from the pads. Um, for instance, in the background right now, I have FL Studios running and you'll see that it takes quite a bit of pressure to get a loud, nice sound out of it, such as It's not a big deal, it's not a deal breaker, but uh, You might want to raise up the sensitivity as I said. I also know that online if you look it up, you can find videos on changing these out and putting on some type of cushion behind it so you give it a nicer feel to it but as far as the feel they're fine in my opinion on the right of the pads we have all these buttons they obviously all have their own specific functions and i'm going to try to explain them as well as i can so you get a better understanding of what type of features come with the mpk25 first off we have the lcd panel the lcd panel lets you know what preset you're on depending on what software you want to use um, you can go through the different presets using the dial and you can load up your own and pretty much set them up however you want. You get up to 30 presets and uh, it comes in pretty handy if you use a lot of different software. Here we have the preset button. If you're currently a little lost in the LCD display, you press this and it'll take you back to your current preset that you're using. Next we have the edit button. The edit button allows you to change the behaviors on the keypad, the regular pad, or even the knobs to better suit what it is that you're trying to do. The global button allows you to set the preferences on the MIDI reset commands and global system. Lastly, we have the preview button. The preview button allows you to see the value that was last sent by the controller without actually having to resend the value. Next, we have these buttons. As you can probably tell by the word pads at the bottom, these are all related to the pad. Here we have the pad bank. And with the press of each one of these buttons, you get 12 new pads at your disposal, allowing you 48 in total. Next, we have the full level button. What this does is it allows you to get the full level of volume per pad without having to put the extra effort, which comes in very convenient. The 12 level button is very interesting. It takes the last pad hit that you got and it redistributes it across all the pads but each one is gonna have a different volume setting, which comes in handy if you're making a track and you want the same exact pad hit, but with a lower volume. The higher the pad number, the higher the volume. And then finally, we have note repeat. While this is activated, you can just keep the same pad pressed and it'll give you multiple hits of the same note. Next we have the keyboard related buttons. We see the art button, which just activates the arpeggiator mode. And then we have the latch mode. What the latch mode does is, once you hit keys with the arpeggiator working, it'll memorize and continue to arpeggiate these notes even if you depress the keys. And then finally we have the octave buttons, which do what you would imagine. It would just take you up or down an octave so you have more range with your music. And finally, we have these 12 knobs. They're all customizable. They're all 360 degree turnable and can be mapped to whatever function you need in most softwares that you can find out there. I love the weight to them. They're not too loose and they come in very handy. 
Well guys, that's it for the Akai MPK25. It's a pretty sturdy and well built keyboard if you ask me. The keys are full sized and have a nice weight to them, just like the wheels and the knobs on the rest of the keyboard. Like I mentioned before, one of the few issues that you might find with this keyboard is, considering you don't have that many keys, you will find yourself only using one hand most of the time on this keyboard. Also, the pads are easy to use, but sometimes you might find that they're not sensitive enough, but nothing that you can't fix on the software side of things. All in all, if someone was looking for a smaller MIDI controller, I would definitely recommend the Akai MPK25. Thank you guys for watching. Comment below and let me know what you guys think about the Akai MPK25. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you want to see more tech news and reviews. See you next time.